Hello, thanks for having me today. So today I'm just going to give you a story about phage and prophage, beauty and the beast. And um, so in a meeting like this, I don't need to tell you how important trees are, um, but I'm just uh, going to tell you that we more than ever, especially with the lockdown, we appreciate the uh, economical, social and environmental values that trees provide for us. Um, but we know that there are abiotic and biotic stresses that are affecting or threatening the ecosystem services that trees provide for us. Uh, for example, like pests and pathogens. And we all heard about like the extreme uh, event of climate changes, like uh, droughts, we have a flood, uh, or we have like extreme heat waves, and that they're gonna affect the, the way that diseases happen in the UK or all around the world. And for example, we can have an outbreak of existing pests and pathogens, or we can have the uh, new outbreak of a new pests and diseases. So it is more than ever important that how we understand the pathogen and how we can manage them. For example, in the UK, trees are vulnerable to attack by bacterial pathogens that cause canker. For example, you can see uh, the canker that cause in ash, um, uh, that is the vertical open lesions on the bark of the tree that it caused by Pseudomonas salicinae. Or we have cherry canker that is caused by Pseudomonas stringipatobals that you can see in the extreme uh, conditions, you can see tree bleed to death. Or we have uh, acute octocline that is uh, caused by polymicrobial consortium, a mix of different pathogens that is a quite complex, uh, complex disease. Or we have a uh, bleeding canker of horse chestnut uh, that, as its name, is that trees bleed to death. But today I'm just going to focus on uh, uh, the bacterial canker of cherry trees and how we can manage the disease. So as I said, um, cherry canker is caused by Pseudomonas stringy pathobals. So Pseudomonas stringy is a globally important plant pathogen. It infects more than 180 different plant species. That among them are one of those important crops that it makes this pathogen one of the most damaging uh, plant pathogen. Um, so this pathogen um, is, a, is an annual problem for cherry fruit industry. It infects all parts of the plant from, as you can see, from the leaf to fruit to the trunk and woody part of the plants. And it causes a huge economic loss to cherry fruit industry in the UK. So, but there is no cure for this disease. We know that the uh, use of uh, traditional uh, method, use of copper compound is not uh, effective and is limited because of the adverse environmental effect. And use of breeding for uh, resistant is quite challenging because of the complex nature of the disease. And because there are three different pathways of the pathogen that are causing the disease with different pathogenicity and different virulence that we can't use the breeding. So another potential alternative method of control would be use of biological control agents or natural microorganisms to control the disease. So we can use bacteriophages as a biocontrol agent so bacteriophages or phages are viruses that infect and kill bacteria. But how does it do it? So a bacteriophage attached to the bacterial cell surface is injects its genomic material inside the bacterial cell and then hijack and take over the replication machinery of the bacterial cells. And then it produces hundreds of phage progeny that they lies the cells open and the best the cell open and they infect the neighboring cells. So why bacteriophages? Because they are one of the most abundant microorganisms on Earth, and because uh, they are highly selective toward the host. So they, they are host specific and they don't affect any other microorganisms. And because one bacteriophage can infect one bacterial cell, but at the same time, it produces hundreds of other bacteriophages naturally that infect other bacterial cells around. So we wanted to see if we can use phage to control cherry canker. So we went to, to different cherry orchards around the UK and we collected samples from leaf, bark, soil of the cherries. And then we took them back to the lab and we collected and uh, isolated uh, 70 phages uh, from those environmental samples. And then we tried to 
visualize them to see their shape, their size, uh, which family they belong to, and how we can uh, use them uh, to control the disease. But the first step to understand if the, we can use the phage as a body control agent is to see how safe they are. For example, if they can infect any other uh, microorganisms. So as I said, they are so uh, host specific, but we wanted to see if they affect any like beneficial microorganisms that are out there in the plants. So we tested the phages against uh, a range of beneficial bacteria, for example, like Pseudomonas fluorescent, but none of the phages were able to infect them. So it's the first step to show how safe the phages are to use as a biocontrol agent. The next step to see how safe the phage are is to genome sequence them and understand what is in the gene. Do they have any virulence genes inside the genome? Or do they carry any lysogenic genes that make them uh, to change their life cycle from lytic to lysogenic? I will talk about this later. So none of the phages that we collected had any virulence genes. So based on these results, we narrowed down our phages to 13 phages and we started to understand how effective they are in uh, killing bacteria cells. So we want them to kill bacterial population as quickly as possible, but we want to, for them to keep the population down throughout the experiments that we use. So first we tested them a different concentration of each phage, for example, phage MR1 here and phage MR6. So we tested the uh, uh, bacterial growth in the absence of phage, as you can see, it grows, and, uh, and then a different concentration of phage in the uh, bacterial population in the presence of phage. And then we measured bacterial populations every 20 minutes for 24 hours. So as you can see, that we understand that the bacterial phages can kill bacterial population uh, in a matter of few hours. And the, the, the one of the concentration keeps the population down without any bacteria resisting. So next, and now we know that they are safe. We know that they work in the lab. So what about implant? Or can they work uh, when they uh, want to manage the disease uh, on cherry leaves, for example? So we then tested this uh, um, on the leaves. So we first infected them uh, without any phage. So you can see uh, the PSS on its own, the Pseudomonas stringy, Patois stringy. And then we tested them using phage individually or in a mixture of phages, or we call them cocktail of phage. And that has, that we can mix uh, different strains of uh, the bacterial phages that they can target more um, bacterial population. So then we measured bacterial population every 24 hours for 96 hours. And you can see when phages were um, present individually in cocktail, they kept the population down. So, I'm, I'm telling you so far about the, how beautiful phages are uh, to be used as a biocontrol agent. But there is another story to this. So let me tell you about prophages. So I told you about the lytic cycle of phage, but now I'm telling you about lysogenic cycle. So a phage can attach to bacterial cells, but in, uh, instead of uh, in, uh, uh, taking over the replication machinery of the bacterial cells is going to integrate its genome inside bacterial genome. Um, but, uh, but under a stressful condition, like under UV light or extreme heat wave and stuff, it can uh, leave and excise from the chromosome and become active again. But while it's le leaving the bacterial genome, it can take some of the bacterial genome with it so it can be a virulence gene that is in the uh, reside within bacterial genome, but phage that can take that with it and then transfer it to another uh, bacteria that doesn't have that gene. So the Pseudomonas stringy pathomorphous spornorum, uh, they raise 5244, that is a, a cause bacterial canker in cherry. It has a prophage inside this genome. That prophage carries a um, HPA1 gene, that's a virulence gene. Based on bioinformatic analysis, we know that this prophage is active. So what does it mean? It means that it carries, it has all the components of the phage. For example, it has the head, tail, it has all the components of uh, the DNA packaging and assembling. And But we wanted to test, okay, can this prophage really excise from the chromosome and become active? So we did a series of tests first to see if the phage can, if the prophage can excise, um, and we say yes, it can, and it can circularize, so it means it's active and has this HPR1 gene on it. 
So next is was to understand if this prophage that has a hopper R1 gene at this virulence, you can move to another population of Pseudomonas stringy, like it's an epiphytic population that lives on the surface of uh, uh, cherry but doesn't cause any damage. Then can this uh, prophage move to the um, uh, epiphytic population and move this uh, virulence genes around? So we mix the bacteria, the 5244 strain that has the prophage with a strain 3.7F that is, uh, doesn't have the prophage inside this genome. And we applied UV treatments as a stress uh, condition. Then we left them, incubate them for a few days, and then we homogenized them and placed them because each one has different antibiotic resistance uh, and the prophage was tagged with the antibiotic acid so we could um, follow the movement of prophage from the uh, pathogen to the epiphytic population. Then we tested them, the 3.7F population that we collected, and we used the genes that are only present in the prophase region. So if we get the bands from here, from the HPR1 gene or endolysing gene in 3.7F, it means that it was the genes that were moved when the prophase moved to the epiphytic population. So as you can see, you have the clear bands of the HPR1 and endolysing genes that it shows that prophase can move and can move the, uh, the um, genes with it, uh, and then it can move around. So uh, it's quite, um, in terms of the using phage as a biocontrol agent, it's important to understand this aspect. So to sum up, it's just to say that in order to use a phage as a biocontrol agent, we need to understand its genome first. We need to see, look for the lysogeny genes, and we need to look for the virulence genes. Uh, if, they, if, they, if a prophage has those genes within its genome, it's not safe to be used. Then uh, the next thing is understand, as I said, the phages are so host specific. They only uh, attach to the uh, specific bacterial host. So uh, but we can create a cocktail or mixture of phages that can target different population of pseudomonas, for example, pseudomonas stringy patois stringy, Pseudomonas stringy patwamorosporinorum. So if you use different bacteria phage uh, population that target different uh, uh, bacteria, then we can use a cocktail and with one 